Prior to the 18th century, we didn't see much in regards to artworks in the early Americas. Native American art was present prior to the American colonization in the 17th century. When the pilgrims arrived to the Americas in 1620, they had a very limited amount of personal belongings with them. What we do see in the 17th century are beautiful pieces of furniture, such as cupboards, chairs, cabinets, and chests with drawers. These pieces were functional, yet decorative, representing the rawness of this time period. With plenty of American timber at hand, furniture making quickly became a necessary trade for the people of the colonies. There grew to be two different styles of furniture during this time period, known as the 17th century style, which we do see a great deal of, and the early Baroque style, otherwise known as the William and Mary style. The 17th century is a new world blend with a sprinkle of Renaissance traditions. Joiners and turners were the two groups of people that produced these pieces of furniture. The joiners joined straight wood together by shaping the wood with axes and smoothing with planes, and the turners used chisels to shape the wood while it rotated on a lathe. Wayne Scott chair was an upscale alternative to the commonly constructed chairs of this time. Often these chairs were made of oak and constructed in a fairly simple manner. What made these chairs unique was the individual inscription or carving laden in the chair. No chair was identical, yet equally unique in detail. A beautiful cupboard was yet another functional piece of furniture of this era. One piece in particular was the impressive cupboard thought to have been made by Nathaniel Stone, which unfortunately we do not know much about. The cupboard is built of both red and white oak with Atlantic white cedar on the inside of the drawers. Perhaps two of the best furniture makers in New England at this time are William Searle and Thomas Dennis, who both settled in Massachusetts in the 1660s. These two men are likely the makers of a beautiful chest used to store li linens, personal items, and household goods. The design of the flowers and leaves are emerging as a popular design of the time that flourished during the 17th century. The early Baroque, or William and Mary style, was more of a slender and graceful design which utilizing the joining method of dovetailing that is still used in modern day furniture building. Very few artists and their work were well known or documented during the 17th century in American art history. Thomas Smith was an American artist who lived during the 17th century and was most known for his self-portrait completed in 1680. This is known as the earliest documented self-portrait from America. Smith utilized light and shadow to express emotion in his portrait. Another commonly known piece of art is called Mrs. F Elizabeth Freak and Baby Mary from the 17th century. However, the artist is unknown. The portrait displays a wealthy wife and daughter from Boston in the late 17th century in New England. This is the same unknown artist that is thought to have painted several other portraits during the 1670s in Boston. The Enlightenment era in the 13 colonies is thought to have taken place between 1714 and 1818. This period eventually led to the American Revolution and the development of the American Republic. During this time in the American colonies, the growth and exploration in politics, science, and religion led to the return of the arts, literature, and music. From this restoration, we see great artists arise such as Benjamin West, Thomas Jefferson, John Singleton Copley, Gilbert Stuart, and Edward Savage, to name a few. Benjamin West became known as the father of American painting because he was known as one of the most prominent artists of this time. Born in Springfield, Pennsylvania in October of 1738, he worked as a teacher and mentor to other American artists in London. His artwork started with portraits of children and continued on with his artworks in portraits for many years in Pennsylvania and New York. In 1760, West spent some time in Italy where he continued to paint before settling in London where he painted historical and religious pieces. He was given the privilege of being George III's official painter for many years. One of the most influential pieces West was known for was the historical piece The Death of General Wolfe in 1770. This piece was a display of a wounded English commander in the Battle of Quebec in 1759. 
he was one of the first to display the subjects in modern clothing. Although the uniforms were not completely accurate, he combined the historical connotations with a realistic view of the scene. In our textbook, Art Through the Ages, it is said that West's greatest innovation was the blend of contemporary subject matter and costumes with the grand traditions of history painting. Benjamin West went on to mentor Charles Wilson Peale and also Gilbert Stuart. John Singleton Copley was an American painter that started in the Massachusetts Bay Colony. He was primarily known for painting portraits of important New England colonial figures such as Paul Revere, Thomas Gage, and Richard Heber. He likely is known best for his artwork of Paul Revere, who we well know in history now, but at the time he was not a recognizable hero of the American Revolution. Copley's work here was subtle yet detailed. The lighting is clear and the reflections given as much detail as the shadowing of the subject's face. The portrait's humble characteristics are what set him apart from the European artistic styles of this time. At this time, neoclassicism made its appearance during the American Revolutionary period. Here we see the revival of art, music, and literature in the classical sense. Thomas Jefferson adopted this revival due to the deep values of morality, idealism, and patriotism. Jefferson's artistic pieces we primarily see in architecture, along with several other talents as an economist, theorist, and a statesman who, as we know, went on to be the president and an American founding father later in life. He brought this neoclassical style to the United States in his design of architecture, such as the state capitol in Richmond, Virginia, Monticello in Charlottesville, Virginia, and Jefferson's Rotunda at the University of Virginia, also in Charlottesville, Virginia, later in the 19th century. Gilbert Stuart, another one of America's great painters of the 18th century, was born December of 1755 in Rhode Island. He had the privilege of moving to London in 1775 to study under the well-known Benjamin West. Upon returning to the States in 1793, he was known to paint several portraits of George Washington. Other portraits included President Jefferson, Madison, Monroe, John Adams, and John Quincy Adams, heroes of the war, important statesmen, and prominent women of the era. Stewart's most prominent work was an unfinished portrait of George Washington that can still be found on the U.S. $1 bill today. Lastly, we look at Edward Savage as an American painter and engraver. He was born in Princeton, Massachusetts, and went primarily unnoticed until 1790. At this time, the George Washington family posed for America's first, first family portrait. Although his artist experience is seemingly limited, his first family portrait was the main attraction at the Columbian Gallery in Philadelphia in 1796, and he went on to live a profitable life. As we have seen from the handful of artists over the 17th and 18th century period, history was a major part of the arts. People struggled, as we know from history. Yet the art pieces, decorative furniture, and architectural design portrayed as beautiful simplicity of life during this period. This part of history didn't lack education and independent thinking, yet it did lack the technological advances we have at our fingertips currently. The works that are still on display hold a certain reverent peace and embracing of the time period by displaying the heart and soul that went into each and every piece.